Time has finally come. I'm going to be reading Harry Potter for the first time ever. I watched the movies for the first time last year. When I watched the movies, I was obsessed. I immediately wanted to know more about the world, about the characters, about the story. Where do you get that? In the books. The first one is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Because I have seven books to get through, I'm gonna be brief about my reviews, but I'm still going to be as detailed and thorough as I can. Okay, let's go ahead and start book one. <laughs> for a little update. It has been a little bit. I am now on page 61. I'm about to start chapter 5, Diagon Alley. So right now, Harry, he's living with his aunt and uncle and cousin. And Harry lives in this tiny little closet underneath the stairs. And the Dursleys are just horrible. They neglect him. They don't treat him like family, let alone a human being. They ended up taking Harry Potter in because his parents died when he was a baby. And both of his parents are wizards, but they were killed by a bad wizard named Voldemort. The Dursleys are awful. They talk poorly of his parents. They don't even tell him that he's a wizard, let alone his parents were wizards. And so Harry thinks that his parents died in a car accident. But then he gets this letter one day and it's assigned to him addressed to him but mr dursley won't allow him to open the letter this letter is an invitation to hogwarts the school of wizard wizardry and <laughs> that's hard to say but he can't get his hand on this letter because his uncle keeps taking it and so it's so funny because the letters start coming in multitudes and at one point the whole house is filled with letters and so now they have to go to this secluded little it's like a rock island in the ocean because the Dursleys are trying to flee from these letters. But of course, the letter ends up finding Harry and then freaking Hagrid is introduced. He comes into the little hut and he ends up explaining some things to Harry, but he's furious because the Dursleys never told him this stuff. I love JK Rowling's prose. I feel like it's just so funny how she writes things and it has a little bit of like sass with some of the things she says and it's really funny and I am really enjoying it. So let's continue on. Hi guys, it has been a few hours later. I am now a hundred pages away from being finished. It is almost Christmas time at Hogwarts. So up until this point, they have been sorted into their houses. They're all Gryffindor. Well, Harry, Hermione, and Ron. It's so hilarious how sassy Ron is <laughs> with Hermione. This is going to be a bit of a spoiler, so skip ahead to this timestamp if you don't want to listen to this spoiler talk right now. As soon as Harry pretty much gets to Hogwarts, even before that when he's like shopping for his school supplies, he is so famous in this world. Like everyone knows who his parents are and what happened to them and what happened with Harry and Voldemort. Now with Harry going to Hogwarts, it's really picked up. As soon as he gets there, it is so fast paced. They have fought trolls. They accidentally found Fluffy, which is a three headed dog. Fluffy is huge, literally ginormous. And then Harry almost gets killed during a Quidditch match. It's 6.30, the night is so young. So I would love to finish this and get started on the second one. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter! Draco can just walk right out of here with his rude little comments. Next day, I recently, I just got a mocha pot and I really wanted to film me trying to make 
a latte. I have officially finished Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Okay, now I'm going to hop into spoilers, so I'll put a timestamp right here. Harry, Hermione, and Ron are basically going on this quest to stop Snape from getting the Sorcerer's Stone. They think that Snape is in cahoots with Voldemort and trying to get this sorcerer stone can make you live forever i love all the different games and puzzles and riddles they have to go through before they can actually get to where the sorcerer stone is at i might have to save my ratings for the end of the video because i kind of would like to compare this one to the rest of the books in the series now hopping into harry potter and the chamber of secrets you see a couple of weeks of harry's summer when he is at the dursleys and then when he goes to stay with ron it is so funny what's happening with this car i am learning more about mr weasley and what his job title is and what exactly he does at what is it called the um ministry it's just all making so much sense to me now why Voldemort wants to come back for Harry. Why all of these people are so scared. Why they won't even say his name. It's so cozy. It is so cozy. It's seriously the perfect fall read. Now we've kind of just run into our first mystery. Let's continue on and I'll update you guys somewhere along the way. Hi guys, it's the next day. I finished Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets last night. Wow, oh my gosh. I feel like these have been a breeze to get through. I'm going to be starting Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I am so excited for this one. I loved this movie so much. Going into this, I'm hoping that I'll learn a little bit more about Professor Lupin and about Sirius Black. In the movies, I felt like Sirius was introduced and then he didn't have that much screen time until he came back. And then, spoiler, spoiler, he died. <laughs> and a spoiler. I don't know if this is gonna be good for me or bad for me. Am I gonna get even more attached? I don't know. So in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, basically what's going on with this one is Harry is back at school and you meet a new character named Myrtle and she is one of the ghosts that haunts the bathroom at Hogwarts. She's not a scary ghost, she's just very sad. I would say just a very depressed ghost. Also meet Professor Lockhart who is a famous wizard and he's also an author but he's very pompous and prideful he's the new dark arts teacher and it's funny because at one point in this book they mentioned that that is the one position that they cannot keep filled he always said the most ridiculous things so you're kind of seeing harry going back to school with ron and hermione then there are some students that are starting to get petrified and they're turning to stone so there's this mystery of who is doing this why it's like i said i've only watched them twice whenever they're going to the chamber of secrets i was like who is going to be down there waiting for them i completely forgot i think it's cool seeing in the books the evolution of voldemort i think jk rowling is a great writer and I'm really enjoying it. And she has this perfect mixture of making Harry Potter so cozy and mysterious and fun, but at the same time, as you get deeper into the book within the last like 100 pages, she always has the stakes get so much higher. Now we're getting into the thick of it. I am so excited to freaking read two of my favorite characters, see them on the page. Let's read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. literally just started the book and I'm already obsessed. This is my favorite intro so far. I think in the first and second book, JK Rowling is trying to, of course, do some world building, but more than that, I think she's really trying to show the dynamic of the Dursleys and just how absolutely awful Harry's living conditions are. And now in this third one, she's jumping right into it. We already know what to expect from the Dursleys and how Ron calls the Dursleys household. <laughs> and he's just like yelling through the phone. <laughs>
page 183. It is like three o'clock now. I am loving this one so much. Right now, I can confidently say this is my favorite one so far. I love the addition of the Dementors. I feel like they just add like a super eerie, spooky vibe to Hogwarts. And so at this point, they're trying to keep Harry Potter inside because they're like, this is what's safest for you. He is clearly coming after you. But Harry kind of wants to just live his normal life. He's not scared because to him, he's like, I have killed Voldemort three times. I'm not scared of this guy. Dumbledore had said that the Dementors know not to get on the grounds. Like they could, they could have helped, but they knew that they're not allowed within the grounds. Fast forward, Harry Potter Potter was in this Quidditch mat and the Dementors were there so obviously they crossed the threshold. I remember thinking the Dementors were just evil and bad and I was really confused on why they were guarding Hogwarts because they just seemed like they would definitely be followers of Voldemort but now it makes sense. It all makes sense that they are the guards of Azkaban. I just learned so much about Sirius Black. I am so shocked. I don't even know what to say. So right now, Harry, he went to Hogsmeade because, you know, he's not allowed to go because he didn't get the permission slip signed by the Dursleys. But George and Fred gave him the map of, like, all the secret tunnels that you can get out and go to Hogsmeade. And so he's there with Ron and Hermione and he's eavesdropping because he is trying to get back inside to go through the tunnel to get back to Hogwarts but he can't because some of the teachers are there they're all talking so he's eavesdropping they're all talking about Sirius Black and Harry just finds out that he's technically his godfather but I am so shook because on the night that Harry's parents were killed Sirius Black was there he came to the house where Hagrid was getting Harry because Dumbledore told him to go get him in book one. And Sirius was there as well. And that is the bike that Hagrid flew in on. It was Sirius's bike. And now they're, ah, uh, they all think he is bad. So they're talking about secret keepers right now and how they believe Sirius Black was a secret keeper. I'm gonna really read that part because I still don't quite understand what that means. But this is crazy. This is so freaking good. Good morning, everyone. I finished Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I absolutely loved this book so much. The Prisoner of Azkaban, it starts with a prisoner named Sirius Black who breaks out of this prison. And this prison is a fortress. It is infamous. Everyone in the wizard world knows about it. He's convicted of killing 13 people with a single curse. And he has said to be a dedicated follower of the Dark Lord Voldemort. But now he's escaped. Everyone's scared because they know who he's after. And he is looking for Harry Potter. I love the characters in this one so much. Literally, I was 40 pages away from Indy last night and I just sat here staring up at the ceiling and I was like, why? I don't even want to keep going because I know what's gonna happen and it's gonna break my heart and I can't go through that again. And I feel like I learned a lot in this one. I learned a lot about the Dementors for sure and Voldemort and some of his followers and more about Harry's parents and what they were like at school. We are on book four. Harry Potter in the Goblet of Fire. I can't believe these are children's books. Good 
morning everyone it is the next day so basically in the fourth one goblet of fire there's this tournament and they're doing it for the first time in a long time because the death toll was really high and so they stopped doing it but it is this competition that goes on between hogwarts and a few of the other schools wizard schools basically there's this goblet of fire and you put your name in it if you're of age i think you have to be 17 or older and the goblet will choose a person from each school that will compete in this competition and there's three winners harry hermione ron they can't compete or george or fred because they're not of age yet spoiler incoming three two one harry's name was in the goblet of fire um harry has to compete now i feel so bad for him oh my god if so much happens to him like he deserves the happiest ending honestly i feel so sad for him but his name is in the goblet of fire now everyone is upset because they think a dumbledore did this and there's cheating going on or harry did it or someone else did it for harry but the goblet of fire chose harry so he has to compete and they can't redo it because the goblet of fire will only ignite whenever they're about to do a competition oh this is genuinely the first one that i'm reading that i i can't put it down every time i put it down i'm like nope this one has been the most engaging for me thus far so good. I am loving the storytelling and the writing in this one. Continue on with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Seriously, the last thing I need. need I was gonna say, seriously, the last thing I need is a coffee because I'm feeling a little anxious. And then I just totally stuttered. That is so creepy. Come out, Harry, come out and play. Fudge is so concerned about his political status, it's making me so mad because he's not hearing what they're saying. Like, I understand that they worked so hard to rebuild what was lost after Voldemort, and like they're trying to move on, but literally everyone, one of the greatest wizards of all time, is telling you Voldemir Voldemort is back. They're like trying to convince him. With all of the evidence they have, they are still trying to convince him. And just like that, I finished Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This one is like six stars for me. It's really interesting because in the Triwizard Tournament, there are three tasks that you have to complete. Tasks are really, really cool. I feel like in the movie though, they make them a little bit more dramatic and intense, which was interesting. I have been loving learning more about people and hear like their backstories and kind of getting some more context. We are going to start Harry Potter in the Order of the Phoenix. I love this cover so much. It's so pretty.
just know where I'm at. I'm on chapter 32, Out of the Fire. Everything just keeps taking and taking and taking from Harry. Dude, I can't with this freaking book. This book is causing emotional damage. Dude, that's so sad. I feel so bad for him. He's just in denial and... Oh gosh. Literally the tears at this point are just coming and I can't stop them. I knew this scene was coming and yet I'm still crying. It's just so sad. That's so funny. The little mirror part is hilarious that he, oh, but Harry forgot about it. That's sad. Cause he could have talked with Sirius that way. Wait, why didn't they ever, wouldn't that have been like the safest way to communicate? What, instead of the fireplace? Maybe they both just forgot. Finally just learned how Professor Trelawney got her position at Hogwarts. Oh my, yeah, I would say she is a suitable candidate now. <laughs> So this past weekend, I watched the first Harry Potter with our friends. Um, they all came over. We had like a Harry Potter themed party. It was just like 15 of us just crammed over here. <laughs> and, and there was so much that I realized I didn't pick up on in the movies. And I realized I actually don't remember the movies as much as I thought I did. A lot of the things I'm reading in the series, either like they weren't in the movies or I just genuinely forgot about and there's stuff that was happening I'm like oh my gosh wait that's how that happened or that's how that person got there like the whole thing with Professor Umbridge going into the woods that's how most of the book series has been for me which I'm glad because a lot of it has been a surprise I am so glad that the Order of the Phoenix, <laughs> they let the Dursleys freaking have it. Other than how absolutely devastating this book was and how it just broke my heart, I am so impressed by the writing. It's just so good. I felt like every page added to the story somehow in some way. Even the Quidditch matches, there was other little things going on. In the fifth book, Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix, this is Harry's fifth year at Hogwarts. Voldemort is on the rise, the Death Eaters are on the rise, and the Ministry does not believe him, of course. The opening scene of this book is crazy, but Harry is so angry in this book and that was hard to read at some points like i understand where he's coming from but at other times he was just being freaking rude but harry's starting to get these really vivid dreams that are almost telling him what is happening like currently but from someone else's point of view and so he's figuring out who that person is why he's receiving these dreams they're more like nightmares so he's dealing with these dreams all while being told by the ministry that he's making all this up for attention and he ends up having to go to trial. <sighs> okay, we are on Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This is the sixth book. This cover is so cool. I'm on the first lesson that Harry is taking with Dumbledore. And I just learned about Voldemort. By the way, I have called Voldemort Voldemort since I first saw the movies. It's kind of like an inside joke with Ian and I. I just learned about Voldemort's freaking parents and who his mom is. I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. I literally was watching this all go down and I'm like, who are these people? Like, who is this family? Why are they relevant to the story? That is, that so, is so messed, messed up. up. Okay, spoilers. So skip to this timestamp. Voldemort's dad 
was freaking basically like drugged by Voldemort's mom with this love potion. And we're learning about that love potion right now. We just learned about it. When I started this book, the first chapter, honestly, was so confusing because Snape makes this pact in front of Bellatrix. Wait, that is her name, right? She killed Sirius Black. Not trying to be dramatic but that did not have to happen that did not need to happen but bellatrix is there and her sister her sister is malfoy's mother that blew my mind and so snape he literally does this pact with i forget her name her name is like nassau it's something like it sounds like narcissist i think but it was like narsa narsaw or like nasa 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 and snape is trying to prove that he is a double agent a double agent spy for voldemort but he said the same thing to dumbledore now my head is just spinning dude snape just pesters harry and i don't understand why i understand james but why let it out on harry and i understand harry looks like james i just had to dump all that on you guys because i don't know how i'm feeling and i needed to share especially looking back on this i'm excited to see what is revealed to me but holy crap this is so good this whole time giving my review and I wasn't even recording. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This one was a lot of information. I felt like that's pretty much what it was. It wasn't as plot driven. Like you're learning a lot about who the heck Voldemort is and how he became so demented and twisted, which I really enjoyed, especially learning about his upbringing. The spoilers, by the way, so skip ahead to this part if you don't want to know. I believe the fourth book, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the first chapter, I remember reading that and thinking, okay, obviously like Voldemort killed his whole family. And I was thinking at that time, you know, he killed his mom, his dad, and a sibling because there were three people dead. But then in this one, I figured out, dude, no, his mom died after giving birth to him. And he went back and killed his dad in that house, but also his grandparents, his dad's parents. And that blew my mind. He just has so much pent up anger and resentment towards his father, which I do understand like his father sounds horrible, but at the same time, Voldemort turned into a psychopath. So I learned how Professor Lupin became a werewolf. I feel so bad. I literally thought that he was like, kind of just developed like a disease or something. He was literally bit by that Death Eater that is a werewolf and he does that to kids. He's amazing, he handles it like a champ, so. You know who else is a homie? Like, she is a ride or die. One of my favorite characters is Professor McGonagall. She loves Harry so much. That is so evident throughout the series thus far. And so her becoming the headmistress at the end of the Half-Blood Prince because Dumbledore died? No one could have filled that position better than her, in my opinion. Okay, we are done with the spoiler talk now. This quote melted my heart. This is chapter 26 of the Half-Blood Prince. Dumbledore says this to Harry. I am not worried, Harry, said Dumbledore, his voice a little stronger despite the freezing water. I am with you. And then starting Harry Potter in the Deathly Hollows. Dudley dude. Right now, it's just after the wedding. So I'm on chapter eight, I believe. So I'm going to continue on and I am so excited because I am loving it so much. Oh my 
gosh, I love Professor McGonagall so much. If you want anyone on your team, I feel like it's her. So this one character says, this is not a spoiler. This one character says, we can push it off on the kids. We'll say blank was ambushed by the kids, them kids up there. He looked up at the starry ceiling towards the dormitories. We'll say they forced her to press her mark and that's why he got a false alarm. He can punish them, couple of kids more or less. What's the difference? And Professor McGonagall says, only the difference between truth and lies and courage and cowardice. 730, yeah. So I have 140 pages left. No, I actually feel kind of emotional about this. Like, I don't want to say goodbye. This has been so fun. office he's like don't call her that oh the thing is is i knew he was going to die but like i'm still just not okay with it i can't believe lupin dies like i knew he was going to but it's still it's just so sad <laughs> He's clearing Snape's name. Snape Patronus was a doe, said Harry. The same as my mother's because he loved her for nearly all of his life. From the time when they were children, you should have realized, he said, as he saw Voldemort's nostrils flare. He asked you to spare her life, didn't he? He desired her. That was all, sneered Voldemort. But when she had gone, he agreed that there were other women in a pure blood worthier of him. Of course he told you that, said Harry, but he was Dumbledore's spy from the moment you threatened her, and he's been working against you ever since. Dumbledore was already dying when Snape finished him. Snape has been avenged. walked into the great hall or wherever it was where everyone was kind of keeping safe it was just so weird like i know everyone just went through a lot of trauma no one was super overjoyed that harry literally just came back from the dead kind of and killed voldemort it just wasn't the celebration i was expecting in the book this is perfect this is exactly how I imagined it. It literally says, hundreds of them pressing in, all of them determined to touch the boy who lived, the reason it was over at last. That's how I imagined it to be. Oh my gosh, I just finished. And it jumps to 19 years later.
That was amazing. We have finally finished the Harry Potter series. I am definitely a Potter head now. I am obsessed with Harry Potter. I just feel so sad that I'm finished with the whole series. Like, I want to hop back in and reread it all right now. Time to rank all of these from least to most favorite. I will say none of these are below like a four and a half star. Starting with my least favorite, I'm going to say Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I loved this one. I loved the beginning. I loved the end. All the way through, it was great. I would give it four and a half stars, which is like the lowest of this series. Next, I'm actually going to go with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I loved this one so much. I think I would give it like 4.75 or 5 stars. This one, I would say, was the coziest out of all of them. This is the first book, so you're really just getting introduced to the world, the characters, and I loved the world building. I loved learning about Wizarding World. Okay, from here on out, I want to say all of these are on the same playing field for me. I, it's basically impossible to rank them because I love them all basically the same, but there are some that I liked a little bit more than the others. So these are all five stars. I think the next one, this might be a surprise to a lot of you guys. I'm gonna go Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Once again, this is five stars. This is like a perfect book for me, so good. This one, you're just getting a lot of information. It's really setting up for all the crap that happens in the next book, which I absolutely love. It wasn't as heavily plot driven as the other books. This one was just a lot of information. It was really cool. I'm kind of neck and neck between the Half-Blood Prince and the Goblet of Fire. I did really enjoy the Triwizard Tournament. That was so fun to read about. And I think they're kind of on the same playing field for me but the freaking graveyard. Front cover to back cover, I was hooked. My nose was in the pages. Next, I would do Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is book three. Okay, I'm gonna try and be super discreet, but I love Padfoot. This is so good. I just think it's genius. The whole time travel aspect of it, that is so brilliant. I love this book so much, it's so engaging. So this is like six stars. Next up, I'm going to go Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This one destroyed me. This one emotionally tore my heart out and I will never be the same. Love the Order of the Phoenix, Dumbledore's army, and then I'm sure this comes as no shocker. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is probably my favorite. I love hunting for the Horcruxes. I love learning about Snape. It was definitely hard to read at times, but it was so good. The war, the sacrifice, I just don't know how I'm gonna move forward. I love, I really felt like she wrapped this series up so, like, honestly perfectly for the reader. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Harry Potter was a six star series for me. I think this is my favorite series I've ever read. Ugh, it's so magical and it was amazing. I just felt swept away. Before I end this video, I think it's only appropriate for me to take the sorting hat quiz and see what house I'm in. When you first get to Hogwarts, you are sorted into one of four houses, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Gryffindor. I want you guys really quick, before you keep watching, comment down below what house you think I'm a part of. <laughs> Guess what house I got? Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. I am a Ravenclaw! It's so funny because I have been placed in this house well before I ever watched the movies. Ever since I was little, we would go to the Harry Potter nights at Books A Million, and I would always get this house even when I was a kid. If you enjoyed this video and this is your first one that you are seeing of me, I would love for you to stick around. But if not, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!